that both men may speak freely as they wish. <laughs> <laughs> this is a book that General Sada has written, Saddam's Secrets. And I would like to introduce our Consul General. The first question that I would like to ask both men is why should the American people be involved in the Middle Eastern equation, sending our forces there at this time. And I'd like to start with our Consul General. Thank you, Shelley. Well, I think that, uh, first of all, Israel and America are of so much in common. Um, we are such a, you know, good friends. It's not just a strategic decision. It's a moral uh, thing. We are so much uh, that connects us. We have the same story, actually, of immigrants who went, uh, you know, to create a new society. In our case, it's coming back to our homeland. In your case, it's creating your homeland. But there are very similar narratives, and uh, the, Israeli, um, uh, st the Israeli state was based on the same fundamental values that America is based on. And that's why, you know, the support that we get from America, which is bipartisan, and which uh, it doesn't matter what administration all over those years is because this is what the American people want its government to do. And we're so thankful for that. Um, and it's important for America to be involved in the world um, because America is the only superpower. And it's unlike many you know, empires in the past who really wanted to uh, take the wealth of the world America really is about justice and about democracy and about fairness. And that's why uh, I'm so happy that America is there and America cares about the world and cares about the Middle East. And I know that America is, is the only um, other player rather than us and our enemies who can really bring peace to the Middle East. For those who think America should only care about what happened here, uh, you can't because uh, what you represent is much bigger than just America. It's about the world, and you have to influence the world, and we need you to be with us in our very tough neighborhood. And uh, I'm not getting into in, in what way, because I, I really trust the American people, and, and you know how to do it right. Uh, but we need you, and we need your support. As you were speaking, this came to mind, um, really, the thing that uh, we have in common with Israel that you represent is that both nations were not founded by an overflow of population into a certain area that they just happened to be in or born in. Both nations were founded by people of vision that was based on the Old Testament, the book. Very unique histories that link us together. Um, we have recently completed a history book with uh, two co-authors, Peter Marsh and David Manuel, who are both here tonight. And one of the things that we covered as our subject matter was the story of Haim Solomon. And as you were speaking, I thought of this very important link as well. We were at the Knesset during the time that the loan guarantees were being hotly debated in the first Bush administration. And we could not understand why our nation would not even give a loan back to these people who had come to this barren hilltop, this land of the mountains of Israel, because Hein Solomon, a Jewish patriot, who was also in the first spy ring that started under the leadership of George Washington, had not only helped to save our nation during the time of the revolution with intelligence reporting, 
But when all seemed lost, and our nation newly in its makings was becoming bankrupt, on his deathbed, he said to his courier to go to the synagogue in Philadelphia on the highest holy day of the year where no financial transaction is allowed on the day of Yom Kippur and to ask other brokers and bankers to do likewise as he would do on his deathbed, to empty their coffers of all their personal wealth and donate it to George Washington and his troops in the newly formed Congress. He gave over $680,000 of his money in that day. Can you even begin to calculate the zeros across a computer screen of what it would add up to for us to ever begin to pay them back? So it was extremely difficult to stand there in Israel at that time and try to grapple with the understanding of how we could ever afford not even to give a loan at such a time as this. For we would not be a nation had they not been there for us. But now concerning Iraq, it is another story. Come and tell us your heart as this question has come forth. The American presence in the Middle East is very, very, very important. Amen. And especially in Iraq. I tell you one thing. There is a war declared against America. Yes. It is the terrorism. And these people hate America and hate West. And they want to destroy it by any way. Therefore, when there is somebody who wants to kill you, it is wrong to stay in your home and wait for him to come in the fences and then you fight him. Yes. This is... This is a very bad strategy. Any general in the world will not accept it. The only way of how to deal to somebody who wants to destroy you, it is first to know him, where he is, and go after him wherever he is, and destroy him there. Because these days, the weapons are so dangerous that you cannot give him a chance to come at your home. Right. Only God knows what will be the next explosion. I have got tapes of Saddam Hussein with me, and all America know it, and especially the authorities. Saddam Hussein was saying to the generals and to the ministers, and Mr. Tarek Aziz was there, his deputy. He was saying that one bottle of germs will be taken to Washington and drops in the water, 100,000 people will be killed. And this time, the Americans will find some explosion will happen in Washington, and they will come and see this time it's nuclear, but not normal. This is Saddam Hussein saying by his mouth, and I have got the tapes. And the tapes actually are also in Pentagon, other, other copies. So, ladies and gentlemen, what Americans have done in Iraq, it was the right step and in the proper time. <laughs> of course, my heart bleeds when one American is killed. But remember, you have sent your professionals to go after the terrorism. Don't let the terrorists to come here to kill innocents, like what they did in the towers. And remember, in seconds, in minutes, 3,000 people were killed. And every day, your media is saying that 3,500 Americans are killed in Iraq. But let me explain this. Those who are killed in Iraq, I will bow in, in front of the mothers and fathers that they have the lost, lost their beloved ones. We are all sad, and nobody wanted. it. But when they are defending America, and they are creating the security and safety of American people and this blessed country, I think America deserves that its professionals and volunteers to go after the terrorists and fight, and of course there will be some sacrifices. Yes. But now I want to say something. That in these days, if there is somebody should die for the Iraqi security, it should be not an American. 
It should be an Iraqi. Because the Americans have done a great job. And they have finished the work that the forces of America would do it. Now it's the time that Iraqis should take over and look after their security. And of course, at the beginning, it will be difficult and will be some sacrifices, but in Iraqi side. And that is the price of the freedom of democracy. And the, this blessed nation have did that before. You have also sacrificed for your freedom and democracy. Well, freedom isn't free. Yeah.